are my laughing but very serious red flags for dating as a fat girl. Coming from a certified fat girl who's been a fat girl all her life. I'm 250 plus, so put some respect on my name. Can you imagine bragging about being 250 pounds and then claiming that somehow that's a like that's a flex? Like that's something that's, that's something to, to to take pride in. Like, yeah, I'm 250 and I've been fat my entire life. So I know what I'm talking about on this. It's not exactly a flex at all. That's I mean, if that's it, it, for me, I like that I have multiple maple syrups behind me, right? I like that. And I also like that I didn't make my bed today. That's a flex for me. But for her, I guess it's 250, 250 pounds of pure woman, I guess, dude. Uh, but I mean, I don't know why we stopped so early, but I, I thought that was I thought that was uh, uncalled for, uncanny. Okay, number one, if he refers to your fat as fluffy, he not serious. Baby, he's offended by the word fat, which means that he's offended by fat. I just want it one way or the other, dude. I know this is like really, really black and white, but I hear this so often where these women will say he cannot talk about it because if he talks about me being fat in any way, that means he's probably fetishizing me. And if he's fetishizing me, he doesn't actually want to be with me. He just wants to be with the fact that I'm fat. And I don't like that because I'm a whole other person underneath my fat. And the fat is really not even that big of an important part of myself, right? And I go, okay, that makes sense. I totally understand that. But then I hear some other women go, no, he needs to literally get down on his knees and praise my fupa because I'm so ungodly levels of beautiful. I need him to literally praise me for being fat. And I think, dude, it's it's too, it's too, it's way too much. Like, you, you guys need to pick it one way or the other. And this girl, I guess she's in the middle, which, I mean, this one is the most complicated one because how are you going to get upset with him for using the word fluffy? He's just using buzzwords or words that are going to be a little bit more, like, less impactful to try to mitigate it a little bit. Because you don't know. If you meet somebody for the first time, you're not going to know who this person is, how they're going to react to certain stuff. You have no knowledge about this person. And, like, the process of being with that person is getting to know them, right? understanding where their boundaries are, where they stop on stuff, things like that. It's like, it's really, really hard to diagnose those issues within the first two, three, four weeks. It sometimes it takes months. Sometimes if you date somebody for literally years, you still don't know some of that stuff. And sometimes you, like, they'll let you know like, oh, like this really offends me when you say this particular thing. You're like, bro, we've been dating for like a year and a half. Why didn't you say that sooner? Sometimes people are like really conservative about that stuff. So when somebody says fluffy, it's not that they're it's not that they don't like the word fat or they're afraid to call you fat because they might might or might not offend you. That just might be a terminology that they use as opposed to other words. Like a lot of guys use the word thick, for instance. Like a lot of dudes will sit there and go, man, I want my girl to be thick. And you go, oh, send me a picture. I need like an example of what you mean by thick. And they'll send you a picture like, dude, this woman is literally dying. Like she has like type 10 diabetes or something. Like her leg is literally falling off. You know, her, her foot looks like Swiss cheese. And that's what they like. But that's what they call the women. They call them thick. I wouldn't call them thick. I don't know why so many people have these different terminologies nowadays. That one in curvy doesn't make any sense. This woman doesn't have any curves. But, like, people say these words. And that's not always an indicator of them being afraid of saying another word. Or it might. And that just might be okay. Like, so what if he doesn't use the word fat? I don't even understand why that's even an issue. Like, I'm just taking, I'm taking it way too far in this one, but that's a really dumb point. You don't date a guy because he referred to you as fluffy instead of fat. That's so specific. It's way too specific, dude. That doesn't even make, it's way too specific. And it's like, it's never gonna, it's, it's never gonna work in actual practicality. Some people just say different words. Baby, he's offended by the word fat, which means that he's offended by fat. That's not how that, you can be offended by a word. That's not how that works, bro. That's like somebody saying, I don't like to say the F slur, right? The gay, the gay word that everybody uses, right? Like you are, you know, that's, you, you don't want to use that word. Are you just scared of gay people? Or is that what it is? Like you just see a gay person, you're like, ah, no, no, you're not scared of fat. You're not offended by fat. If you don't want to say a particular word, that's not how that works at all. Sometimes people have different words that they do and do not want to use. And that's okay. That doesn't indicate that they're scared or they don't want to be around those particular people. That's dumb. That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> I don't know why you would even say that. Which means that he's not actually attracted to you. That's really crazy. That's crazy, dude. Where are you getting this logic from? So you probably shouldn't date him because he's probably just trying to figure himself out. Sometimes. <laughs> A lot of people are figuring themselves out. I don't know how old this woman is. It's really hard sometimes to judge based off of like physical appearance, just off face. I don't know. I'm guessing she's probably in her mid to late 20s, maybe early 30s at the most. A lot of people during that age bracket, even up to later on in the life, 
take a long time to figure themselves out and it's okay to do that. And you know what's also really interesting is that as you grow older, maybe the thing that you thought you liked is no longer the thing that you like. And because you got older and you got a little bit wiser, you start realizing that like who you are as a person and start being okay with yourself more and more and more and tolerating less and less and less. I know a lot of people think that's like a bad thing, by the way. Like I hear a lot of people go like, oh, I don't want to be with a woman or I don't want to be with somebody that has like all these restraints because I want somebody that's going to be open to doing all this stuff. I want to be a leader. I want to be a follower. I want that person to follow me. It's a good thing if you have more restraints because that just means that now you're more secure in yourself. You're not going to put up with the, like the same amount of stuff, if that makes any sense. So you hear this. And so it's not, it's not exactly a bad thing for this person to not know what he likes or he's trying to figure himself out. A lot of people are figuring themselves out. And just because a, if you date somebody, okay, and like this isn't traditionally the person that you would date, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That could just be that you're trying to you're trying something new, right? Like, oh, like I don't usually date nice guys, for instance. You date a nice guy, and then you realize, like, oh wow, I actually really like this guy. He's like really fun, he's really cool, he's like super talkative, and I can communicate with him more instead of just having a guy that wears skinny jeans all the time and then like goes outside and is on his phone all the time, whatever. Like, there's plenty, like there's a wide varieties of people, and sometimes you don't know what you like until you get it, and then you realize, wait a minute, for like my entire life, I didn't know I liked this, but now I like it. It's awesome. So people are figuring themselves out, and that's okay. It's not inherently a bad thing to have somebody figure themselves out. And that's cool. Number two, if he approaches you when you look... She says that's cool, but she's literally dismissing dudes based off of literally one word. Like... <laughs> You can't say that it's okay and then just follow with that up with, yeah, but I'm never, don't date him. Just don't date him. It's okay that he's figuring himself out and he used a word like fluffy instead of fat, but that's an indicator for not dating this guy because he's figuring stuff out. You're using it as a bad thing. Like you're saying because he's figuring himself out, that's a red flag and that should mean that you don't date him. But then you just went, you just said right after that, that it's okay. That doesn't make sense. You can't do that he's both ways. To figure himself out. And that's cool. Number two, if he approaches you when you look a mess, it really breaks my heart when I see women get approached by men and they look crazy. Like, I look crazy out of time. But, I mean, you outside, you know, you got sweatpants on, a T-shirt, maybe even a bunny or some socks and slides. And you're like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I be pulling them on some chill stuff. No, baby. He thought that you would think that you wouldn't have no standards because of the way you were dressed. Wait, this woman is like 3D chest in this, dude. Like, I, <laughs> So do not approach a woman if she looks bad because if you approach a woman when she looks bad, then you think that she's lower because you're seeing her in a lower stance. Therefore, you might think that you can get more from her or like uh, use her in a different type of way because she's lower than you in that particular sense. I just... um. Where, why, why would you ever think about it like that? Most people default look ugly. Like it's, it's, it's not an anomaly to say that when you wake up, you're going to look like Sasquatch, but when maybe like an hour after that, you probably look decent. You probably look better. You probably look okay. So if you're like leaving the house in your bonnet, which I wouldn't necessarily is a, say is a bad thing. I know there are a lot of people out there that think it's a bad thing for women to wear bonnets out in public, which in my opinion, I've never really thought that. Uh, I see where it comes from. Cause a lot of people think that it's like, what's the word I guess ghetto or ratchet or there's some kind of like um what's the word dude laziness to it because you're not actually prioritizing doing up your hair but instead you're just taking the easy route and putting a bonnet on which is crazy because bonnets entire purposes are to protect the hair and then this girl could literally just be having like a really bad hair day or she's just trying to protect the hair maybe she did something to her hair that night before and it's not done and you need to wear that bonnet to ensure that that day before it doesn't get fucked up right i see too many people not acknowledging this and a lot of black guys too a lot of black guys will sit there and shit on black women because they wear bonnets which is really really crazy because it's not an indicator for this woman to be lazy it just means that she's taking care of her hair in that particular moment in time but if you see a woman outside and she's not looking the best and you approach her I don't think it's a bad thing like that's okay that's literally fine that's not that's not an indication of this guy being like a shark or like some kind of like snake in the grass and trying to like grab onto you at your weakest moment that's a really crazy way of looking at it I don't even know why this is even something that has to do with you being fat I guess it's just a thing in general do women think this dude I've never heard this before in my life bro you're not always gonna leave the house and be a 10 every single time you leave the house most people when they leave the house are probably just doing default shit just to get ready for work or they're going to like a, an establishment they're most of the time they're gonna look default like fives or six on average right like sometimes maybe you could look like higher than that but most people are gonna look normal so I don't really understand why this is even a bad thing like if a guy approaches you like if you're looking normal all the time and a guy approaches you during that time period 
Uh, so, like, it's, that doesn't mean that he's a bad person. If you go out looking fly and no man approach you, that means you're doing the right thing. That makes you feel intimidated. That's a crazy ass way to look at this shit, bro. So you want to be so pretty that no one approaches you, but you're opposed when you're, oh, so you're thinking that when you're ugly, you're thinking that when you're like not at your peak, you're ugly. So therefore men are approaching you not because they think that you're a cool person or maybe they like they find attraction in you, but because you're weak or you're ugly and they think they can like, <laughs> what? How did you come to this logic stream? Like, how did you get there? How did you get there? How did this, how did this, how did this thought process come in your head? Like you want to be so pretty that no one approaches you because it's like your ungodly levels of approachable, unapproachable. But when you're not, you don't like that either. So do you just never get a boyfriend? Because, because you're so pretty that no guy is ever going to approach you. You just said that. And then you get approached when you're ugly and then you don't say yes because they're only approaching you because you're ugly. So you just never get boyfriends. I'm starting to think that this is not even a red flag. This is a red flag video for you. This is like you saying the quiet part out loud. You're just saying the craziest shit right now as if this is normal in any way. Why would you ever say this stuff? You're literally telling us that you you don't want a boyfriend. Like, why would you? Okay, well, hey, bro, maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Somebody can let me know down in the comment section. Am I wrong in saying this, dude? Everything that she said so far is like inherently all wrong. None of this even makes sense. It shouldn't feel easy. Number three, if he focuses- What? It's not about feeling easy, bro. It's not about- Dude, sometimes, first of all, men in general are not even approaching women out in public in, in any way. Like, if you see a guy approaching a woman out in public, that's rare. That's incredibly rare. The social standards nowadays when it comes to approaching anybody out in public is like- on a different level. Nobody's doing that shit, okay? Everybody has, like, really... Everybody's really socially awkward nowadays. Nobody has, like, any physical contact with anyone anymore. Everybody communicates with each other on, you know, like, Twitter or, like, Snapchat or, like, Instagram. Nobody's communicating with each other on the street. That's weird, okay? And I know it sucks. I'm not saying it's weird in the sense of, like, you shouldn't be doing it. I'm saying it's weird as in, like, people nowadays don't do that, so it's weird that anyone's gonna do it in general. So not only are you reducing your chances of a, of a person, because this woman's obviously talking about how she wants to get a boyfriend, but... You're not only reducing your chances of finding a guy to be with by saying that you're so unapproachably beautiful that it's like in, it's infeasible that guys are going to approach you. But you're literally saying that you don't even want the guys to approach you when you're not even looking at your best, which is probably going to be most of the time, given that nobody can look their best at every given point in time. That's ridiculous. So I don't even understand how you're even going to get a boyfriend in general. Like this is so incredibly far-fetched, so incredibly out of the, the realms of normality that the words that you're saying right now, they're, just like, they're so, so ridiculous. All your compliments, all his compliments on your personality. This is a very trick. Dude, I can't even believe this is one, dude. If a guy, it's not tricky, first of all. If a guy is saying, like, oh, wow, like you have a really great, like, dress sense, you're like, you're so funny, wow. Yeah, that's like so great that you have that joke. Like, tell me about yourself a little bit more. Tell me about like your, your experiences growing up, your favorite color, all that gay shit that you go into. If he focuses on compliments on your personality, which should probably be like the number one thing that you focus on the most when it comes to complimenting almost anybody, because it's very, very hard to, if you are going to compliment somebody, if you're going to compliment somebody based off physical, physical stuff, it should be like clothes or it should be like dress sense or it should be like skincare routine or it should be like the way that you wear deodorant or stuff like that not inherent stuff that they didn't really have any control over like for instance wow your chin is so marvelous why i can't believe how great it is you really grew that well it sounds weird like when you compliment somebody on their rib cage you're probably gonna sound weird you probably shouldn't compliment somebody on their rib cage but you know what i'm saying like if you say like wow that ass so fat like, that's not going to get anywhere. Wow, you're so pretty. That's not going to get anywhere. That girl did nothing to be that pretty. You got to thank her parents. You know, like, hey, can I get your number real quick? Can I get your mom and your dad's number so I can compliment them on the outrageous, amazing genetics that they gave you in order to facilitate the amazing facial structure that you have right now? That's weird. You're not going to do that shit. So you probably want to compliment things on like, wow, your skin is like really, really, really shiny. Your skin looks really, really great. Uh, tell me about the skincare routine, dude, because, I, you know, I need to get on that skincare routine. And so, like, I know you got it down pat. You probably done like tons and tons of research i need to know what you're doing so let me go through that wow those shoes look really really great they're not even crocs so that's, that's how i know you actually care about your feet if you're not wearing crocs all the time so like that's great tell me about where you got these shoes tell me about like where i can't even believe where'd you get these shoes uh, sheen wow i can't even believe they sold like ama amazing outrageous like if you focus on stuff like that 
it's probably going to get you way, way, way farther than going, damn, that ass so fat. Wow, your face is so beautiful. Wow, you have just great, amazing areolas. Like, that's not going to get you very far. So it's most definitely 100% incentivized to talk. If you're going to talk about physical stuff, which I would probably stay away from um, at first, definitely comment on things that are like more approachable, like the physical shape of the clothes or the, the pants or the shoes or the, the skincare. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't be creepy as well. Like, don't sit there and go like, damn, I really love rib cages. Like, that's kind of weird. That, you're, that girl's going to think you you want to eat her. But, well, maybe not in that way, right? But it, it, also, the personality is fine, too. Like, what, that that's, a, that's like, completely... Matter of fact, that's, like, one of the best things you can compliment somebody on. Like, wow, you're so funny. Wow, you have such a great sense of humor. Wow, you have just such a great way of talking. Like, I love the way that you... You're, you're, the way your brain works. Wow, you graduated from that school? You must be so smart if you're able to, like, do all that stuff. Wow, what did you... What did you do your dissertation on? That's amazing, actually. That's so crazy, right? What was your GPA? Like, that stuff's, like, really cool, too, bro. What are you talking about, man? Have you... This woman has, like, never been in a conversation with anyone before ever in her entire life. These women are, like, walking red flags. I, uh, this is all, like, these red flags should just be for her. Because all of them so far have just been bad. Everything here is not even bad. If a guy calls you fluffy, that's not a bad thing inherently. If a guy approaches you when you look like a mess, that's not a bad thing inherently. Because you're probably going to look like a mess most of the time. And then if you focus on compliments your personality, isn't that like the number one thing that girls always say? Like, I don't want a guy to compliment me on my physical appearance. Because like, that's too easy. I get compliments on that all the time anyway. So what the fuck? What else do you need? That's like literally the number one. Oh, what? Get the fuck off. Get the Freaky fuck off. one, right? Because you want your compliments that you receive from your significant other to be based on, you know, your heart and how you love and who you are as a person. I often see the other way around. Yeah, I often hear when you're in a relationship with a girl, usually I hear the opposite, which is like, hey, I remember one time I was in a relationship with a girl and we weren't in the relationship for that long. And I remember she was literally like, hey, you didn't compliment me on my ass today. Like you didn't tell me how delicious, what, how delicious it is, how shapely, how, how absolutely beautiful it is. Um, why didn't you do that today? That's really kind of like, why would you never, why would you not do that? Tell me how great my skin is. Tell me about my jaw structure. Tell me how beautiful it is. You need to do that more often, David. And I go, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Yeah, your ass is so marvelous. It's so shapely. The way that it's curving and so many different... I just love it. It's so awesome. Can I see it now? Yeah, right now. Where are we? I, the grocery store, I guess. Yeah, let's just whip it out. Let me see it. Let me get a whiff, right? That's what I hear oftentimes from women when you're in relationships. It's more physical. Like, because when you are not in a relationship with somebody and you compliment them on their butt cheeks... It's nothing. It's like, it's less than nothing. It's creepy because I don't know you, first of all, dude. Why the fuck you complimenting me on my butt cheeks? But when you're in a relationship and, so, and your boyfriend or whatever the fuck, your girlfriend says you have a really nice butt cheek, that means way, way more because you know this person cares for you more than just one dimensionally, physically speaking. They care for you in more than one way. So the impact of that statement is not cringy it's not it's not like creepy anymore it's more wholesome like he does he, he cares more he's he's actually focusing on these this body part of you and not in a not in a weird way but more of an uh, more of an a sincere way if that makes any sense and it feels better too you know because like if a random guy tells you your butt cheeks look good who the fuck is this guy first of all i mean he could probably just trying to smell your vagina well your boyfriend i mean he's probably smelling trying to smell your vagina too but like that's okay because you're trying to smell his penis, you know, like there's plenty of stuff, you know what I'm saying, like it's, it's different, so I personally think that she's got the mixed up, it's more okay to comment on personality when you first meet them, and it's more okay to comment on physical stuff when you're in a relationship with them, that's crazy, I don't know where she's even getting this logic from at all, it's, I'm convinced that these people have never actually dated anybody, because they give out the worst dating information I've ever heard in my entire life, like all the advice they give has absolutely no no standing in reality at all, but they claim it to be like they like they're like dating gurus or something. When when in reality, not nah, bro. You, I don't even know what you're saying right now. None of this makes sense. Your significant other to be based on you know your heart and how you love and who you are as a person. But if you dating that man. And you a fat girl. He'll never say nothing about your fat body being... Dude, you got to have it one way or the other, okay? I, okay, first of all, you're talking about dating, right? So you're saying if a guy first meets you, he can't call you fat. But then you're saying that when you're together with him, he has to comment on your fat. So which is it, dude? Like, even in your own video, you're not even making any sense, man. You can't have it both ways. How does this... How do you even wrap your brain around this? Like, how did you get this thought process? Like, did, did you not, did you not like watch the first initial 30 seconds of your own video and go, oh, wait a minute, none of this makes sense. I just contradicted myself in my own video. Attractive or beautiful to him? For, I don't know how many dudes, look, dude. I don't know how many people are out there 
writing down, jotting down in their handy dandy notebook about how beautiful their girl's fupa is. I've never seen that personally. I don't know if it could, I don't know if it happens very often. Same thing for women. I don't know how many women are jotting down their notepads, how much they love the, the beer belly that their guys have and how they can drop it on their back so amazingly when they're having sexual intercourse. I don't know how many guys, I don't know how many women that are doing that. I just don't know. I don't know many people that like that. So most of the time when people are in relationships with people and they're overweight, they don't usually like it. And I'm going to keep it a buck with you. The reason why they don't talk about it is because they know if they do, it's going to start a conflict. It's going to be more harm than good. Even though the good is literally that person losing weight, becoming more presentable, becoming more attractive, becoming way better of like a physical person, healthy, all this stuff. Like it's just more problems in the moment that person's going to start arguments. And I've been in those situations, dude, when the person had told me, oh, uh, David, I'm 200 pounds. And I go, that's fat. That's really fat. We need to get you in shape. And the other person go, you don't think I'm hot. You don't think I'm sexy. You think I'm ugly. You think I'm gross. You think I'm fucking disgusting. And you go, no, I don't think any of those things. Like, you look great. But the problem is, like, I don't really care about what you look like. I just want you to be healthier, right? And as a byproduct of that, you're probably going to be way more attractive than you are now. And it's tough for the first week, two weeks, maybe even month, because women like to hook on to shit, right? If like, you probably have something come up like two years later, right? I've had that happen to me many, many times where somebody says, oh, but you, but that one time you talked to that girl in the gym and you go, why are we, why are we talking about? Like, what do you mean? When, when, when did I do that? And they go, you don't think I remember? You don't think I remember that time that you was at the gym and a girl walked by you and she, she, she said that, oh, you come here a lot. And you said, yeah, you don't think I remember that? And I go, like, when did that happen? And you're like, mm, mm, 2020. And you go, 2020, what the fuck, dude? Like freaking COVID? What are you talking about? I don't even remember that. I don't, I don't even, were you even there? How'd you even know about that? And you're like, what do you, it, it, that's just what happens, right? With women. Like guys don't even have like thoughts about that shit. But like women sometimes will just find reasons to just argue with you. And it's like annoying sometimes, but like sometimes it's kind of justified, but it's, I don't know. I don't know why you guys always want to battle for no reason. Like it's not even, we were just having like lasagna and talking about like Clifford the big red dog. And you want to bring this up for no reason. I don't even understand the relevance of the situation, but sometimes it's just the way it is, you know? And don't get me wrong. I know guys do also weird, weird really, 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 really weird weird shit like bringing up to you about how like maybe that dude King Tut probably was an incest baby and that he had like weird genetics going on that's probably why he died at 23 or maybe your boyfriend is bringing up that that random Lego Venator set that he was thinking about maybe buying for $650 but he's not actually bringing it up to you You just want to see he just wants to see what you're going to say about the $650 because he's probably going to buy it regardless that's I get it we do weird shit too but it's just in different ways and uh just a little bit of context sometimes like don't just start off the story with don't think I remember don't think I don't remember that time you talked to that girl and I'm gonna go well what is that even what do you what, what when when was this like don't the, can we just not do that and then give me the context first you know say nothing about your fat body being attractive or beautiful to him he playing with it let him go number damn four. dude let him go is crazy as fuck bro this is one and done type shit is insane dude you know how many times I could have like ended a relationship because somebody said something kind of negative to me many times but like you don't because you know that person is good and maybe they just said something that was like a little bit off that time it's okay people fuck up it's all right like you're not going to be perfect so if your boyfriend goes i don't know three or four days without going wow your fucking venus flag trap belly button is so amazingly shaped and you go i need to break up with this guy because he hasn't complimented me on my fucking ginormous fupa then I need to break up with him. Dude, it's, I, I don't know what to tell you. If that's what you got to do, you should have never been together with this guy in general. If you're thinking like that, you don't have a good thought process when relationships. You should not be in a relationship. This woman should not be in a relationship. This is terrible information. Let him go because he didn't comment on your fat when you literally had a problem with him earlier commenting on your fat. What are you doing, bro? Pick one. He playing with it. Let him go. Number four, if you're his first fat girl, if he's not normally affected, normally attracted to fat women. This is like, okay, I, I mean, I kind of see where they're going with this one. Because, like, if you're dating this girl for the first time and she's a fat woman, what they're basically understanding is, like, this is an experiment. Like, oh, you don't actually know if you like fat girls. You're just probably with me because you've never been with a fat girl. So you're just, like, reaching your hand into putting your hand in the water, testing it out just to see if it's warm or not, see if, like, if you like it or whatever. I think this is a very bad way of thinking about it dude because like even if this is the first time this person has ever been with a fat girl do you know how many times guys date in their life like i've only been with i've only been in maybe two realistic relationships two actual real relationships i've had sex with four people but 
two realistic two realistic relationships. So if I date this person, I date this person, right? And then I date you, that's three people. So I don't know if I do want to be with you or not. If I'm dating for like two, three, four years at a time and I date you, it's not weird. It's just like I haven't – I don't know. You know, like I dated – everybody I dated is so incredibly unique. And how do you even know I'm going to find value in your physical shape in the sense of like I don't like it or I don't like it? Like you know what I'm talking about? It's so weird. Oh, man, this person is really fucking kind of weird when it comes to their dating their, their dating strategy. You're his first fat girl. If he's not normally affected, normally attracted to fat women, this should go without saying. Just break up with him? Like, if you, okay, so, like, if you find a guy and he's like, hey, yeah, you're like, or you ask him, like, hey, have you ever dated any fat girls before? And then you go, no. And then she go, mm, nope, can't date you, sorry. I've had this happen to me before. Um, where I used to date, like, cause I, I'm only ever dated black women. Right. And sometimes what will happen is you'll, you'll meet a black girl and she'll go, have you ever dated a black girl before? And then you go, uh, yeah, uh, sure. But like, that doesn't really mean anything because like, it's it, it, like, what, so what you're black. So you know what I'm saying? Like, is there something about you being black? That's going to like persuade me not to date you or like, because you're black, it's like a warning. You know what I'm talking about? Like I'm getting a flashing red card coming up my head. no. No, no, because being black is not like a, there's nothing intrinsic about it that's going to make somebody not want to be with that person. If you do think that, then you're racist because sure, for the most part, especially here in America, black, black women may be wearing bonnets and, you know, having good skincare and, you know, lotion and shit like that. Sure, I get that. But like, th besides that shit, there's nothing like all black people are different. You know, like they're going to be differently oriented. They're, they're individuals at the end of the day, uh, just like you being white or you being Asian or whatever the fuck, like everybody's different, dude. You can meet an Asian person that's, that's not like, you know, traditionally Korean or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Like there are plenty of people that are very, very different. So when I hear people say this shit and they go like, oh, have you ever dated a black girl before? And I go, yeah, but like that, what does that even matter? Like, what is that? You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, it, it, like, I've heard before where it's like, mm, I knew you dated a black girl cause somebody cooked here. And I go, what does that even mean? But I guess it means that I, I picked up some black lingo or something like that, which is really, really weird because, um, I don't think that's like any indication, dude. Oh man, it's so weird, bro. But yeah, it's just weird, dude. No, just because like you did or you did not should not be an indicator to just break up with that person. Like what if you found out, like if I was dating you and I had never dated a black girl before and you were black, you just like ditch me because I didn't know what it was all about like you think i can't handle like seasonings and stuff like what does that even mean like what are you talking about <laughs> like i don't know don't you you play stupid games <laughs> you win stupid prizes do not be the guinea pig for none of these men yeah crazy bro so like this one was never getting a date like i'm just gonna keep it a buck we're already on four and by three i knew that she was gonna be single for a very long time by two i knew she was gonna be single for a very long uh four is almost inconceivable now i don't even most people have not dated fat people so if you're like the first one it's okay because that's gonna be like most people most people don't date in general right it's very it's like if they do date it's very few and far between okay a lot of guys i know haven't had sex in like three years so if you are, are sitting there going dismissing dudes off the basis of they've never been with a fat girl it, you're gonna be single you're just that's just what it is I, I hate to tell you that i know that you rep in that 250 pounds gang that ain't gonna work for you. I'm gonna keep it a buck. You're done. This is never gonna work. You're gonna be single for a long time. And if you're not single, if you're in a relationship or you acquire a relationship, that's only because you broke some of these tenets, 100%. They don't know for sure. This is all an experience. How do you know that though? How do you know that? You can't know that. What are you, reading somebody's mind? Experiment at that point. Professor X here. Of, okay, number five. If he does not like the air conditioner, there will be no further experience. Man, this woman is on some different shit. If you don't like the air conditioner, aren't women the number one people that complain that it's too cold? You know when it's me, right? When I'm in my room and it's cold and I got a woman, it, they'll always go, it's too cold. It's too cold. Maybe I'm not dating women that are really, really fat. I guess. I don't know. But I've always heard it's too cold. It's too cold. And I'm looking like it's like 90 degrees out. And I, I guess like the air conditioner is lowering it to 70. Like, what do you mean it's too cold? Like, I'm not turning it down. And then they get upset and you're like, bro, it's fucking, it's hot. Like, what are you talking about? It's not. It's not cold at all. Imagine my dismay as a young woman when I found out that people were being nice to me because they wanted to sleep. So I'm not trying to be is this Is this like not something that women know though? Like I always assume that from the time of like a woman hitting puberty that they've always been like sexualized. I've always thought that. And by older men, by younger men, by every man. I was always assumed that once you're like, once you hit that point, it doesn't matter. Like you always can have sex with anybody. So... 
I, 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 sometimes I hear like, oh, being, imagine being the dismay of finding out, like, you should automatically always know that. Like, if you're a woman, I would say 99% of men, even gay men, are probably going to want to have sex with you, right? Like, is that not something that people, I thought that was just something that women all knew. A woman, when I found out that people were being nice. Especially here in the West, right? It's me because they wanted to sleep. So I'm not trying to be shady or side No, be shady, dude. That was a... I don't know if she's just ignorant, dude. But I feel like if you're just... There's no way you don't know that. There's no... Like, what are you growing up? Like an Amish village or something like that, dude? No. Like, every woman should know that, dude. Any dude that approaches you, any... Like, there are very few times where a guy's gonna talk to you or be around you or whatever. And he's not gonna want to have sex with you. Me, right? I don't care. I don't really give a fuck if you're a woman or whatever the fuck. Whatever. But... That's only because, like, I'm really secure and I don't really care about vagina anymore. And maybe, like, if that person, if that person's already in a relationship, but sometimes that doesn't even really even matter because I know a lot of guys that literally don't care if a woman's in a relationship or a guy's in a relationship, sometimes they'll just cheat. But I was 100%, I was, like, always working on the assumption, like, if you were here in America or, like, you were in the West, you should know that, like, most dudes, yeah, they want to have sex with you. You have a vagina. It's, like, hot commodity. It's me because they wanted to sleep. So I'm not trying to be shady or side eye to this woman who's just sharing what her experiences were. But I just wanted to add to this as a fat woman who grew up fat. Growing up fat, you are consistently told that it is physically impossible for people to be sexually attracted to you outside of like fetishes. To the point- Yeah, but like where are you learning that from though? Like who's teaching you that as a young lady? That's such a weird piece of information. It could just be like, I guess, pornography right because like for a long time man i knew that when i watched it when i was younger i just kind of assumed that women wanted to be like i guess beaten up because like that's all i saw and like really really hard sex you know what i'm talking about like that's a sex that doesn't actually really please anybody but you just do it because you saw it in a video and then you thought this is like what you want to do or like this is you you know what i'm saying like i see this constantly where people go oh i just want to be like i want my back i want my back blown out i want i want it to be grinded on me and you see guys in the club going like this right that's what they want. But, like, most of the time, that's not, like, really fulfilling um, intercourse. That's not, like, really what people really want to do. It might be okay, like, every once in a while. But most of the time, it's not really, like, the be-all, end-all. It's just, like, an exaggerated truth. And it's because you watched pornography really, really young. And I get it. Like, everybody's super fucked up nowadays. Like, a 100 years ago, uh, maybe a guy saw, like, one vagina in his life. Like, two vaginas at most, right? I've seen, like, thousands of vaginas and thousands of penises in my entire life and i know for a fact that's probably like really fucked up i mean i know i'm like mentally okay but there are plenty of people out there that are not mentally okay there are people that are like really fucking weird i just saw a video of a guy literally today that was like he went into a urinal sorry he went into a public bathroom not to pee not to do anything he just licked the rim of the urinal and then just walked out he just recorded that shit and i was just thinking like mm, I mean, like, to each their own, but that's fucking weird, obviously, right? That's weird? Is that not weird? That's weird, right? Like, if I was, can you imagine, like, can you imagine, like, going into the bathroom, and maybe you gotta bust it down, maybe you gotta, like, wash your hands, whatever the fuck. You walk in, you open the door, and you just see a guy, and just licking the, uh, uh. Like, what do you do? What do you do in that situation? Do you walk out? Do you just, like, keep going? Do you just, like, do you use the urinal that he was just peeing in? Like, let me, let me help you out a little bit. Like, what do you do? You know, I would probably walk out. I could hold it, dude. But uh, I saw that video today. I thought it was weird. I thought it was really, really weird. Some people are doing some weird stuff. That even if a thin person does loudly proclaim their love of fat people, it's either treated as there's something wrong with them or they're just doing it as a pity party for the fat person to make the fat person feel better about them. But do you know why that is? Like, do you know why the majority of people think that? It's because being fat is not an attractive trait like for the majority of people in the world being fat is not attractive most people don't want to be fat most people that are fat don't want to be fat and most people that don't are not fat do not want to date people that are fat because most people know what that means when you're fat which is you're not taking care of yourself in a very basic way that's that's what it means so if you're not taking care of yourself and I know that a lot of people are going to sit there and say, well, if you're in a relationship, it's not about taking care of the other person. That's bullshit, okay? It's about compromise, about deliberate work. 100% it, 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 is about you having to cater to that other person and they're catering to you. And then the byproduct of that is that your lives are both, both easier, if that makes any sense. So yes, you're going to have to do stuff for that other person and they're going to have to do stuff for you. If I'm like overworking for you and like you have all these issues and to top it off most people are not attracted like you shouldn't have to force yourself to be attracted to the person that you're with you should want to be with them physically speaking and like emotionally as well and all this other stuff right but 
these people saying like, oh, I just, I, it's really, really crazy that people like only find fat people attractive if it's like a fetish or whatever. Yeah, dude, because like that is most of the time. Like I'm sure you can, look, I'm sure you can find somebody somewhere that will like you, will love you for all your great, amazing features as a fat person. But that is very few and far between. And then also you're gambling off this because I hear this all the time where they go, you're going to find that one person that really loves you, that really cares about you. And I go, one person is fucking terrible, dude. And also, if you do meet that one person, how do you know you're going to even like him? How the fuck are you going to roll the dice on this shit and pull a two and hopefully that those two guys are just somebody that you can at least tolerate? That's gross, okay? No, open up the floodgates. Pick who you want to. Okay, that's terrible. You shouldn't be gambling, playing the lottery. Because, like, here's the thing. Even if there was somebody out there that did like you exactly the way you are, bro, you're literally gambling. How do you know you're ever going to meet that person? People die alone all the fucking time. Okay, never have relationships. So why the fuck would you gamble on that shit? That's terrible. That is absolutely atrocious advice. They're just doing it as a pity party for the fat person to make the fat person feel better about themselves. So for me, if you're dating somebody because you feel bad about them, it, I, I don't think many people are doing that. I guess unless your name is, fuck, I guess maybe if you're in like an early 2000s rom-com, maybe this could work. But like most of the time, nobody's dating somebody because they feel bad about them. There are a few people. Oh, man, there are a few people out there. It's really, really sad that people want boyfriends or they want they want relationships really, really hard. So they'll they'll put up with things because they want that relationship not because they like that person but they like the idea of being in a relationship so they're tolerating a lot of things right i met many women that tolerate guys that cheat on them i met many women that tolerate guys that don't give them attention or like don't do anything for them and don't get me wrong it's all right like if your boyfriend's like playing video games by himself or he's working or whatever the fuck but like you know obviously making time is like really important cheating obviously never tolerate that but like same thing on the other side like i've met a lot of dudes that just want to be in relationships or they just don't care a lot of guys i figured don't really care a lot of dudes are very very passive in relationships and they don't give a fuck they're just like whatever this girl's hot i guess i can have sex with her sometimes and they'll put up with shit just based off that it's it's a little bit weird weirder of a dichotomy, right? But I know a lot of guys that tolerate women that literally knock at their door at like 2 a.m. in the morning that are not warranted, like they block their phone numbers, they're fucking emailing them. I knew one guy that literally kept dating this girl after she keyed his car three times. It's it's crazy. I don't know why I see so many people that want to be relationships so bad that they're able to tolerate such worse, bad, terrible, disgusting behavior, or you just don't care. Like, I'm not going to put up with somebody that's keying my car three times and microwaving my hamster and then peeing in my toaster. Like, it's just crazy. But some people will. Some people totally will. And it's, it's an anomaly to me, dude. So I don't think many people are tolerating it um, in the sense of like, oh yeah, I feel bad for this girl, but I know a lot of people that are tolerating it because they want a relationship and it's harder to get out of the relationship and put in the work to like find somebody else because it is a lot of work. And they're just staying with a person because it's easier and even though it's bad behavior, it's okay because they at least have their boyfriend and it's terrible. It's a pity party for the fat person to make the fat person feel better about themselves. So for me, it's really hard to perceive myself as a sexual being for other people. Like, I will wear the low-cut tops, I will wear the mini skirts, I will wear all of that because I think it's cute and I like how it looks on me. But thinking of other people perceiving me sexually in that way, it just doesn't occur to me. It's not something that I believe is happening. And I'm sure it is. I'm very cute. I'm sure there are some people who are. But it just doesn't in occur in my brain that that is something that's happening when I interact with the world. And I'm not sure that I really prefer the alternative. I don't know if I really want to be sexualized all the time or. I kind of see this dichotomy a little bit, dude, because for most dudes, dudes are not sexualized. And I feel like it's probably a benefit because people, no, it's either nobody looks at you or everybody looks out of you, right? And I know for me, most people don't look at me, which I'm totally fine with. I don't care. I think it's fucking amazing to just have autonomy and not have anybody like really appear like nobody looks at you and stuff like that but I know a lot of women that are you know even like average or even really really attractive and they get nothing but attention and unwarranted unwarranted attention of guys just like approaching them conversating with them for no reason let me get your number let me take you out let me do all this stuff and it's got to be super annoying because none of these guys are being genuine, right? Um, even if you're getting like a DM from a guy and he's telling you that you're pretty beautiful and all this stuff, he's just trying to get in your pants. And that guy is not actually somebody that's trying to be with you. He's just trying to get something from you. And a lot of 
people have a hard time distinguishing that stuff. And it takes a lot of like experience to figure that out. Because if you're like 21 and you don't have any dating experience and you're getting a whole bunch of DMs from guys telling you that you're beautiful, pretty and all this other stuff, and then they have sex with you and then you never get that stuff back, then you're gonna realize, oh shit, like I just was used and all these compliments were literally meaningless. Or so many guys will do this where they go, oh bro, I was like really nice to this girl and I was like the shoulder to cry on and she was like really, really distressed and all this other stuff and she still left me. And I always think like, bro, you didn't actually want, like you weren't actually being a genuine person. Like you weren't being a friend. You just wanted something from that girl and you're upset that she used your friendship as a friendship as opposed to using you as like a penis. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's it's, it's cringy all the time. And women do it too, of course. Um, Many, many times women will do this stuff in the same way, of course. But it's it's just... It's cringe because like what you're actually saying is that you're not you're not actually looking at that person as a person. You're using it you're looking at that person as like a sex toy, basically. And that's okay if you're in a relationship with somebody and you want to look at them as a sex toy, as long as it's not all the time. As long as you guys are people and then sometimes when you're in the bedroom or wherever else you are, I don't know, I've heard some people say they've had sex in like weird places like laundry mats or, you know, uh fucking booths somewhere. I don't know, whatever. If you're having sex there, it's fine. But I mean, don't have sex here. I don't think that you should have sex in public. It's illegal, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, I understand that you want to be sexualized. It's great to be sexualized, but um, I always see it from the other side. Like, women get it really, really bad, and men don't get it at all. Sometimes men don't even see it, though. Like, a lot of dudes don't even think that women get any type of, like, harassment. Like, I've met so many women that go, like, I was harassed today. The guys, this and this. Guys will just dismiss it. They'll go, no, that's not true. But then when you actually experience it... Then you realize like, holy shit, this is true. And that's why I hear so many times women go, I want to just like walk with a man or I just don't want to like go outside by myself because if I go outside by myself, it's not it's not that they think that they're going to be victimized in the sense of like women are going to be like guys are going to like put their hands under their skirt or like, you know, uh, BSA'd. Most of the time, it's just they don't want to deal with the hassle of random dudes just approaching them and talking to them in very weird ways. Like it is it, it's, it's and until you don't until you see it, until you don't see it, you don't see it. It's crazy. Um, yeah, it's eye-opening shit, dude. It took me a long time to realize that. Or feel people looking at me in that way. But yeah, it's just not the way that I interact with the world. This is hands down the worst thing about being fat. I know you've heard me- The gut, the stomachs. Complain before, and yes, I agree with everything that I said because obviously I'm always right. But this is actually got to be one of the worst things. <laughs> well, I grew up in a group of girl, like, best friends. Like, they're still my best friends. They're all really hot, conventionally attractive, skinny girls. I've had so many interesting experiences with the men that have been around us over the past 10 years that honestly... It makes sense why I thought I was a lesbian for so long. <laughs> Not all men, because some are nice. And this is how I know. It's kind of like being fat. It's kind of a good thing in a way, because, like, I get a barrier of, like, if you're a piece of shit or not right off the bat. I see this, like, oh, it's a good thing to be fat because you can't be kidnapped type thing. And I always think, how often, how often are you going to be kidnapped, dude? Like, if you're looking at, if you're looking at it's a benefit to be to be fat because it's basically like a litmus test to see who got what guy is actually going to care about you for you rather than your physical shape which in general most dudes care about physical shape for the most part like when you first meet them because dudes are very very like visually oriented creatures women care a little bit more surface level but physical appearance does play a big role but i always think like it's such a bullshit way of looking at it because Okay, first of all, if you're doing this based off of like, oh, I'm fat, so it's a benefit because I can shoot, like, I can see what guys do or do not want to be with me. First of all, those guys were never going to be with you in general. And if they are, they're probably just going to use you for sex anyway, right? It's like the argument of like, oh, women need to cook, clean, take care of the household, have my children, stay at home, do all this stuff. And then I, if we ever get robbed or if there's ever a home invader, I will protect you. And then I go, okay, so like, this woman needs to work. This woman needs to literally take care of you. She needs to take care of the house, clean, all the stuff. And then on the off chance, it's like 0.3% chance of the house getting robbed, which is very unlikely. Like, I'm not saying houses don't get robbed, but in comparison to what she's doing, which is literally every single day, she has to do all this shit every single day. And then all you have to do is protect her one time or maybe even twice in your entire life. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's so crazy. But then they always go, but if when I do protect her, I might die. And I go, okay, I get what you're saying, but again, this is like a 1% chance, like less than a 1% thing is going to happen. Same thing here. Like what you're basically saying is that 
because I'm fat, I'm not getting the options that I would have gotten if I wasn't fat, which is a good thing because I don't want those guys to be the guys that I'm interested in because all they want is physically attractive women, which I get it, but you're not getting anything in general. Like, it's like, where are you even getting this logic from? Um, but like men who are shitty will just literally act like you do not exist if you're fat. <laughs> I've had random guys at clubs. Yeah, this doesn't even make sense though. Like if you're fat and you're, and you're telling me it's a good thing that guys aren't approaching you because they're not approaching you and you don't want to be with those guys, that doesn't even make sense because you're not even getting options. So, and I guess the options that you are getting are not the ones you want given the fact that you're single. They like come up to my friends and like they'll introduce themselves to everyone except for me. And it's like, it's ugly like that's so weird that's that's really sad dude can you imagine like having a group of people like a whole bunch of hey what's going on my name is david yep my name is david my name's david my my name's david my name's david like can you imagine that what are you talking about that's that's is that what's happening how does this go about dude like and then you're just sitting there eating peanuts drinking your bud white your bud light is that what, what do we how do you get there like, and how many times has this happened to you where you're out? Do your friends acknowledge it? What do they do when this happens to you? Do you just like, oh, sorry, if you can't talk to my fat friend, then you can't talk to me. Like, what do you do? Oh, yeah. People, man, these real, the, the people will say some things and I feel like it's like the most uncomfortable thing I can hear and they just say it like it's nothing. Like it's like their everyday stuff and they just say this stuff and I go, that's bad. That's really kind of terrible. What are you doing about that? Nothing? Okay. Please actually let me know if this is just me because... I hate when this happens. Like, I, it's genuinely like being fat feels like you're actually invisible to most straight men. And it's like... What do you mean most straight men? So are gay men approaching you? What? Uh, okay, bro. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't even understand why you would even specify straight men. I don't think gay men would be approaching you since they're literally predominantly homosexuals. And they like penis. And they don't like vagina. And you're a woman. So that would indicate that you have a vagina. So why would it matter if straight men are not? Isn't that all you're looking for? Okay. I don't know what the fuck the purpose of that was, but. A very <laughs> ugly feeling, especially when you're in a group of girls who are like skinny and conventionally attractive. So can't you be also skinny and conventionally attractive so you can get the attention that you obviously want? If you're a guy and you're only nice to girls that you're attracted to, then I don't know what to tell you, but you're not- If you're going to a bar, okay, here's the thing. I feel like people have this really weird idea that social settings don't indicate really anything at all, which is obviously not the truth, because if you're going to certain places, there are going to be certain things that happen in those certain places. Like, obviously, if you go to the fucking grocery store, you're not going to expect to see women twerking and guys going like this while they're behind them. Like, you're not going to expect to see that. But guess what? When you're at the club, you see that. You see it all the time, matter of fact. Girls twerking on the dance floor, guys going like this, guys filling up on girls, girls kissing guys. You see that all the time. And so, depending on where you are, there are going to be things that are more acceptable and there are going to be things that are less acceptable. So if you're at a bar, okay, or you're at a club or you're at a, an establishment where drinking is involved, okay, and you all know these establishments and you are upset that guys are not looking at you as a, a thing to, to, to get sexual satisfaction from or relationships from, yeah, this is literally the environment for that. And like, I don't know why you're like, you're not looking at it as like a, oh, I'm at this environment and dudes are literally just not acknowledging me. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't want you. That, uh, yeah. It's not, it's not the same thing as like, man, what, what, what do you mean is this logic? If you're only nice to girls that you're attracted to, then I don't know what to tell you, but you're not a nice guy. <laughs> and on this woman is, this woman is, this woman has a very weird way of thinking about this shit, dude. Honestly, you hate women. <laughs> the delusion where you- uh, Um, ugh. <laughs> That's like somebody going, I went, that's like going to a pet shop and then going, you know, I, I really wanted a particular cat, a long hair cat, perhaps maybe one with, with big ears. You know, I think it'd be great. A younger cat too. So it'd be good for my family. And then somebody goes, so you're not trying to go for an elder cat. You're not trying to go for a cat that's maybe a little, sh you know, shorter hair to things like that. No. So you just hate cats. Well, oh no, I don't hate cats. I just, no, I actually love cats. I just wanted one, this one particular cat. And you go. You hate cats. You, you just hate cats. That's just what it is. You despise, you you physically are repulsed by cats. Like, what is that thought process? Because I don't want to date you. I hate women. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I don't know you. Why do you think that? Why are you so entitled? Why are you acting like that? Who the fuck are you? I'm sorry you don't get any male attention. That's not my fault. 
I'm sorry to say it. Not my fault. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Lose weight. I don't have to tell you. You think you're going to come home with a boyfriend is the best part about getting ready to go on vacation. I don't know what it is. Man, this woman's got some serious problems, dude. I don't know how many times. Like, I've been watching this woman for like six months. And like, it seems like she has the worst way of thinking about anything. You're going on vacation. And the best part about vacation is coming home with a man. Where are you going? What the fuck are it? What is that? Vac what are you going like Italy and hoping that an Italian man will come back to you? What the fuck? Who are you? Why do these people think this? This is weird. I've never thought this before in my life. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to a fucking water park. It's gonna be so great because I can't wait to come back and have a, a big booty Latina on my arm on the way back. Why? This fucking water country, dude. I I don't know. About going on a little trip, leaving state lines, but it's giving, you're gonna come back in love. Why? It has to do something with like in my day-to-day -day life that I just mostly sit in my home. But going into going on a vacation, you know that you're gonna be out of the house for like five days in a row. So <laughs> the probability of meeting someone outside it's looking good it's looking like the odds are in our favor i'm always fully convinced i'm like yeah i'm gonna go there like that i'm gonna like uproot my life we're gonna fall in love it's gonna be amazing it's just a second it's, uh, it's, uh, these people are weird bro these I, I i how old is this woman like 30 dude this is what i thought of when i was like 21 and i was like oh i'm gonna meet a girl it's gonna be great we're gonna have kids it's gonna be awesome like we're gonna have a white picket fence we're gonna have a dog we're gonna have a fucking car it's gonna be a tesla it's gonna be great and then you get to be 25 and you're like oh yeah no it's okay it's like whatever like you're just gonna meet people and then like something works out there something works out like you know what i'm talking about like most people are passive when they date no nope, most people are not looking at the it's not good by the way if you're dating somebody to be looking at the end game of the fucking relationship which is marriage kids all this other stuff and you just you this woman's not even in a relationship okay like just think about that this woman is literally end gaming this shit and she's not even in a relationship I see this too many times, dude. I meet women that go, he needs to be a six-figure guy. He needs to be making tons and tons of money. He needs to drive this car. He needs to do this and this and this. And I go, like, you don't even date. Like, you haven't been in a relationship in, like, three years, dude. How about we work on actually finding a guy to be with as opposed to, like, narrowing him down on his career path, his height, his this, his that, his fucking star sign. It's, like, it's, like, it's really, really weird how some people will go this, this, this deep on things. And there's no reason to. You just... Focus on finding somebody that you like and then work on it as it goes along, you know? Like, it, it, you, you're you're working on marriage plans and you haven't even got a guy yet. Then I, like, go on the trip and the only man I have contact with is usually, like, the bartender when I'm like, yeah, can I have a, a Tito Sprite? It's just sad, dude. Like, your life is fucking sad as shit. This is depressing. You're... <sighs> You're never gonna, you're never gonna enjoy life if this is what you're doing, bro. You're literally telling me you go places, you go on vacation to find men, and then you never get them, and then you come back, and then you're depressed because you didn't get a man because that was your ultimate goal of going on vacation, which nobody ever thinks of going on vacation as getting a man. Most people are thinking, I don't know, sightseeing, enjoying the food, at quality time with the friends, no stress of working, and you're going men. Yeah, and then you're always gonna be disappointed because you never get it because it's not even the place where you get men. Okay, I don't know. Am I wrong? Can somebody help me? Please, but I mean the bartenders are usually hot. I guess. I guess if this. I guess. <laughs> I don't. Know, what the fuck was that? What, dude? It's like a such a curveball to sit there and go. Oh, I only get contact. For, the only man I ever get contact with is the bartender, boo -hoo. but he's hot, okay, all right, you, you don't get him anyway, what is he gonna do, like, pity have sex with you, or pity date you, what are you talking about, so, I'm never, like, that upset about it, but yeah, does anyone else get like this, no, like, I am, like, should I pack my wedding dress, I yeah, get this fucking, underwear for the whole city, anyways, might as well toss in my wedding dress for when I fall in love, get, get it, get in my face, I'm going to Florida tomorrow, so I will let you guys know, um, I'll keep you posted on if I meet my husband or not. It's just going to be depressing. It's just going to come back and go, yeah, I didn't meet anybody. Nobody ever approached me. I spent 45 minutes every day eating at McDonald's because I was so perpetually depressed. Like, that's what I'm going to hear. I don't care. You're, this, you're, that's fucking weird. You think about this really weird. There's just something about, about crossing those state lines. Love all of a sudden is in the air. I hate being fat. And most of the reason for that is like, obviously the treatment that I get, but also trying to explain that kind of treatment to skinny people is like, I feel like I'm explaining the fucking quadratic equation or something. Like they just don't comprehend. One thing they like really don't get is fat phobia. Like I feel like if somebody says something like fat phobic towards me, nine out of 10 times, I'm not gonna call it out because if I do- no, Most of the time it's just passive comments.
You know, like if, it'd be like if somebody was like, oh, yeah, I don't really want to eat breakfast this morning because I feel bloated. That would be like a fat phobic comment to them. And, and that's the reason why you don't call it out, because like, what are you going to call out? Like, oh, my God, I can't believe you would say that with me around. And that person go, what are you talking about? Like, oh, you know, I'm fat. Like, OK, what the fuck? Uh, all right. That's why you don't call it out, because it's probably bullshit. You're probably you're probably focusing on things that are not actually fat phobic, but you're deeming them to be fat phobic because you have this like really weird debate brain towards me. Nine out of ten times, I'm not going to call it out. Yeah, because you're you're going to resent your friends, too, because, like, it's just normal ways of talking, and you're just, like, determining it to be evil. Because if I do, they get very defensive. Which yeah, no I shit, because it's like, what are, you, what are you fucking talking about, dude? I understand, because you don't want to offend me. Like, I'm not thinking yeah. that you're trying to, but it's hard to explain to someone that the whole reason that they said something is because you're fat, because they will immediately just, like not get it deny and be defensive it's just kind of sad because i feel like if everyone listened it would like prevent mis these misunderstandings like in the future but I don't know. But it's just for you. It's just like for your benefit. You have to understand that people want to be reciprocal and they want to get something out of it as well. Like I understand that it hurts you, but like you said, these people are getting defensive, which probably re-secures my claim, which is that you're probably just getting upset over bullshit. Like that's probably the reason. Explaining dating to skinny people as a plus size girl is like actually impossible. Like I've had multiple situations where a skinny friend will be like, no, I think this guy was hitting on you. And I'll be like, no, he was making fun of me. Jessica, what are you talking about? That was the fucking Uber driver, okay? He literally said, hello and my name, okay? Jessica, he doesn't fucking like, what do you, the, the cashier that gave me the receipt? No, Jessica, he doesn't like me, okay? He just gave me the receipt. I don't know what you're thinking. Uh, maybe, I don't know. What am I Situations where a skinny friend will be like, no, I think this guy was hitting on you. And I'll be like, no, he was making fun of me. What? Um, <laughs> who? Who Who was this person? What? What is the, can we go through that real quick? Can you give us like the deets on that? I'm going to need to know exactly what happened there. What, how did Jessica think that this guy was hitting on you? What did he say? And they're just like, what? Like, and I mean, I get it, but it's just like, that's just my natural what thought process is that? What, 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 what did he say? What did they? What did he say that was making fun of you? And your friends thought, oh, he wants you. What? I gotta know. I can't. I, what was that? What was that in between? Does anybody know? Like, leave it down there in the comment section. What you think? What would you think in that? What would you think of that dialogue chain was? Like, I mean, I get it, but it's just like that's just my natural thought process is that everyone's making fun of me. Oh, so you're not even. So he don't you don't even know necessarily that he was making fun of you. You're just determining default that he was making fun of you because you're fat and he may not actually have been making fun of you because your friends also told you that he wasn't making fun of you. So what the fuck? What are you talk are you like actually admitting you're delusional? Am I What? Am, is that what I'm actually hearing like you're ge you're genuinely telling me that you're like gaslighting yourself? Is that not what I got from this? Also having to explain why there are so many people who- Dude, there's no way you can explain that either. Like, how do you explain that to somebody? Like, oh yeah, this guy was making fun of me. What are you talking about? He said, have a nice day. Like, oh yeah, I know, but I know what that really means. What does it really mean? He probably thinks I'm fat and he probably doesn't like want to be with me anymore. Like he probably thinks I'm fucking ugly. And he's like, your friends are going like, what are you talking, bro? What are you saying right now? What are you talking? The guy's like literally like bending over backwards for you. He like literally got you flowers. Like, what are you talking about? Thought process is that everyone's making fun of me. <laughs> Also having to explain why there are so many people who would want to have sex with you, but wouldn't want to date you is like very complicated because they'll be like, no. Nobody thinks that's complicated, dude. Are you serious? What group of friends? Are these friends real? Or do you have real friends? If you're talking to a group of girls and you go, oh, this guy, like, it's kind of weird. Like this guy just wants to have sex with me. He doesn't want to date me. Do you think anybody in that friend group will go, oh, what? Are, are you serious? Like really guys do that like are you guys like just want to have sex with you are you there is that actually happening or is it i know i know i know exactly what you're talking about that's happened to me literally a thousand times a thousand, thousand times i don't know what friend group is not like what what do you what what friend group do you have are they all just like dumb like are they just like don't have any thought process want to have sex with you but wouldn't want to date you is like very complicated because they'll be like, no, that's just like, guys just do that. Guys just do that. And I'm like, yes, but also like, no. Bro, who are these friends? Who? It kind of sounds like, it kind of sounds like their friends are, she makes it seem like their friend, her friends are like weird, right? She makes it seem like, oh yeah, my friends are saying like, oh, they just don't understand this. Like they just don't get it. And then she explains it and I go, 
no, they do. No, like they actually get it. Like they're actually telling you the truth. Like when you said, oh, it's really difficult for me to explain that guys just want to have sex with you and not date you and they just don't get it. And they'll say things like, no, that's just like what guys want to do. And they go, oh, I knew they just don't get it. No, they like literally get it. Like that's them literally saying they get it. Like that's, that's actually, they just said that. They just literally said, yeah, guys do that. So like, what do you mean they don't get it? Like, what do you, uh, you're, you're explain you're, you literally just explain. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and then again, like what you said earlier, it was like, oh, this guy's just being mean to me. And then they go, wait, what do you mean being mean to you? And then you go, I just assume every guy's being mean to me. Bro, I don't get out the friend group. Who are you? Like, you, you're such a pick me. You're such a fucking pick me, dude. What do you? <laughs> Bro, this <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, bro. Get guys just do that. Guys just do that. Get the I'm fuck like, out of here. Yes, but also like, no. I just know so many fat girls who have experienced like having literal secret relationships with men who are like afraid to publicly date them. I think like, a, okay, whatever, bro. I'm not even gonna, this is so fucking dumb. They were fat. <laughs> this is just a random side note, but I do hate when skinny people are very tone deaf in a scenario where like well, someone who's like a hundred pounds skinnier than me. We'll be like, no, you can borrow my clothes. Like if I like was going to like have a sleepover or something like that. I'm like, you know, like I can't, like, I don't know. Like, it's like, are they trying to be like sweet? Like and act like, oh, I don't see your size. Like what? Like that just literally doesn't make sense. Like you wouldn't say that about a shoe size. So like, why are you acting like I could fit in your fucking jeans? You're a size two. Okay, okay. That last girl was kind of on some different shit, bro. I, 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 she, I don't think she deserves those friends. I think those friends are literally like trying their hardest to be her friend, and she's just like trying at every every turn to make it seem like they're the weird ones when she's actually the weird one. Okay, whatever, dude. <laughs> whatever, bro. Anyway, we're gonna end the video here, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate everybody leaving a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Um, oh, it's a long one today. It's a really long one today. No pun intended. Ooh. But um, anyway, I, I, I think people like the longer videos. So I appreciate you guys. I really appreciate you guys. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below with having in box because I think boxes are essential and I think they're beautiful creations and they contain things and they contain beautiful things. Kind of like you, you're a beautiful thing that's contained in the box of our reality. And honestly speaking, your beauty sometimes even shines outside the box because of how incredibly luminant you are, how incredibly massively beautiful you, you, can, you, can, you can make yourself. And I think that's awesome. And I think it's really great. And you take care of yourself and you take care of people around you. And that's amazing. And you lubricate the inner cords of your mouth with water. And you do that so consistently. I love that. I really do love that. I think you're really, really an amazing person, man or woman. I don't care who you are. I think you could probably I balance spoons on your nose for hours. That's how in tone I think you are with the rest of reality. I think that probably you're like a reality warper because of how everything around you just becomes better. Like when you walk, there are flowers that sprout up behind you because of the beauty that you emanate off yourself on a daily basis. Anyway, guys. We're going to end the video here. If you uh, want to check out my social media, you can by uh, clicking the description of this video and the description of my channel, Instagram, Discord, Twitter. All those things are going to be listed down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace. This is Star Patch, by the way. Star Patch. Not, 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 uh, whatever people say it is. Not toothpaste. It's Star Patch.